buying chilling discoveries. Is there something very And communication from beyond. I was standing in the middle of the room facing the doorway. This is huge. Less than an hour's drive north of Edinburgh lies a 700-year-old former Scottish stronghold. It survived attacks and witnessed brutal murders. This now family home is steeped in history, but life here is far from idyllic, with an intimidating spirit threatening its inhabitants. I first saw the castle as a small boy, and then a few years later, it came up for sale. So we came down and, well, we bought it, and we've been here for 32 years now. Uh, I actually moved into Balgani Castle in September of 2012. Uh, Stuart and I had been engaged about a year, uh, and it took me that long to decide to move into the stone edifice, because with me being a Texan, it took me a lot to get used to the change of climate. Uh, but little things started happening here at the castle when I moved in. The experience I had with the Lady Balcona, and, and I could see a shadow kind of here. She whispered, she was right behind me, but it was her words that she says, uh, beware, or be, you know, a warning sign to me. But it was enough for me to react, to say, okay, what's going on here? Why is she trying to warn me? There has been talks of things happening in the past that might have left a, a negative uh, atmosphere lingering. Um, I get frustrated with what I feel might be an evil presence or a curse. And, and yes, I've told my husband I wanted to move out. Barry, Sandy and I are on our way to our next case. We're somewhere in Scotland, that's all I know. The information I'm given by the production team is minimal. This call sheet's blank. The only call sheet I get is that I'm getting picked up at the airport, and who's gonna pick me up? That's it. Oh, look, Dallas. I think, I think this is it. Yep, this is definitely it. On this land, I'm seeing our children running around, but they don't belong to this place. At this point, I have no idea of the significance of this vision I'm getting. Oh, careful, it's tight. Yeah. Most of this looks ruined. I mean, that looks like it's lived in there. I love old stone. This is it. All right, Chris. See you in a bit, okay? All right. One thing I sensed right away when we started coming down the street was a multitude of other, other personalities, consciousness, minds, watching what I'm doing, watching what we're doing in this car, aware of us coming in. This must be the Lord of the Manor. Good morning. Hello? This is, I haven't even stepped in. I don't know whether to go straight, left, or right, so I'm just gonna get out of the car. The number of us believing in ghost spirits and the supernatural is on the increase. People all over the UK are reporting unexplained visitors in their homes. It's like a, a black figure with long fingers. The more we were frightened, the stronger it got. And that's when the mind then takes over. Luckily, there are three people who may be able to help. Chris Fleming, renowned medium. I see a child running through here. He is able to communicate and channel their messages and demands from beyond the grave. Allow me to understand more. Maybe I can help you. Someone just landed right at my back. Jane Harris, paranormal researcher, psychologist, and historian, digging into the history of a location to find out who these entities are and why they are here. Something in here is mocking us now. Oh, what? Get lost. And Barry.
Gary Guy, paranormal investigator and technical expert. Never afraid to take the investigation to places others fear to enter. Someone spoke to him. Let's go back to hell. Chris, Jane and Barry are investigating homes across the UK using specialist paranormal equipment. To gather evidence, communicate with spirits, to find out what they want and help let them go. I just saw you. Who was that? Please talk to us. Doing whatever it takes to return homes back to the hands of the living. If you're not safe in your own home, where do you go? Coming up, a murder spurs on an outpouring of grief. I'm feeling your emotion. Your emotion is flowing through me, okay? Jane has a close encounter. Oh, oh my God! It was that! It was that! And the team are shaken by what they hear. Get well! Get in love! Right, you guys, we're heading to Buntingford. Buntingford? Bunting Falls, yeah. This case is going to be interesting. Forest is a nice place. It's beautiful. Lots of history there, by the way. It's small buildings. But where there's lots of history, you often find lots of spirits. Our team of experts have been called in to investigate paranormal activity at a Grade 2 listed cottage. Since moving in, Residents Sarah Anthony and Henry Bonfield have become increasingly disturbed after witnessing unexplainable and sinister events. There was very faint, light footsteps creaking in between the beds. I think child spirits would concern anyone, to be honest. And if you're a parent, you kind of think, why aren't they with their parents on the other side? I really would like the team to tell me What's happening here? Who these spirits are? Is there any spirits that need help to cross over? I believe this house is is a very active house. I think it's seen a lot of goings on in its time. And probably a lot of bad things have happened. They say it was built for the workers, for the local stables. Perhaps that's all got to do with why there's so many spirits from around this house. And if we can unravel just a little part of it in here, it would be great. Hoping to provide Sarah and Henry with answers, our paranormal team are closing in on the location. Lots of pubs, lots of inns, so lots of hustle and bustle and yeah. different people passing through. Again, another historic market town. Yeah. Medium Chris insists that he be told nothing about the investigation. I don't like to have any details about the location of the place I'm going to. The reason being is I like to go in there completely cold and pick up whatever I get, whatever I feel, so that it's my opinion, my sensations, that's describing stuff that's in there. Chris, are you uh, feeling anything at the moment? We're quite close. Yeah. I'm seeing a girl with dark hair. Just keep getting this little girl. Either we're dealing with the child's spirit, or we're dealing with the child that lives there, or that was there. If that's sticking out the most, then there's something very important involving that. Something with a horse, too. I'm seeing the image of a horse. It's interesting, they hung somebody or they burned somebody in this town a long time ago. The whole town was there. It's still here. Oh, my hand is shaking. Where is this little girl? So, this is it here. Right here? The white one on the end. Oh, so yeah. these are all homes. Yeah, these are all yeah, homes, yeah. Okay. Cottages. But there's, wow. look at the hour. I mean, it's not very big, is it? No, no, no. No, it's crazy. Well, obviously, you've got a lot of people here. Wow. What do you think? I'm getting the second floor. I've got like a child up there, and I don't know if it's a child that's there or it's a child energy. I'm feeling that coming from the second floor. 
Listen, I'm going to go see a man about some paranormal activity, someone who's actually experienced things in this dwelling. So we'll catch you guys soon. We'll I think he's going to help us to know what time period we're dealing with here. I mean, there's so many layers of history here. You can see from the building, so I want to know more about that. All right, I'll see you later. Yeah, be good. See you later. As Barry and Jane head off to find out more about Buntingford and the paranormal activity happening in the house. Hello. I want to get a sense of what could be lurking here. Something was buried over here. Whether it's a child or whether it's someone's pet. I'm going towards a baby. There was a baby that was buried here. Holy cow! When I'm outside here, it's very free. It's I can move about. But see, now this presence is moving towards. It's moving. It's coming out of the house. With Chris busy getting a sense of what could be haunting Stable Cottage, in a more relaxed setting, I'm meeting another of its current residents, Lodger Kelvin. Why, right, Kelvin? So when did you first have your you know, first paranormal experience here in this house? Um, pretty much. Within the first week, um, I saw, at the corner of my eye, I was sitting in the living room, and I saw like a, a person walk across the kitchen window. And can you describe what you saw? At first it was just a like, black shadow, but the more I did it, the more it looked like it was a man walking towards, I don't know, walking from left to right across the uh, kitchen window. Where we live, it's like all connected, so it's like a stable or something. So I believe this guy is like um, a stable hand or something looking after the horses. And it's just going to do his job every night. After discovering that the cottage could be connected to one of the village's old coaching inns, I'm hoping local historian Jenny Dingley can tell me more. On this side, you've got the Bell Inn, which is the oldest of our many inns or public houses. This was the most important coaching inn. So what kind of date, what kind of time period are we talking about? 16th century. Um, and as you can see, the coaches would have swung into this archway. The horses would have gone up, been taken by the grooms and the ostlers, and the people would have gone into the, into the inn for their meals, stay the night. Jenny's brought along some old maps of the village. Hopefully they'll show a direct link between this inn and Stable Cottage. The old bell inn would have been just about here. Now the property that I'm interested in, Jenny, is actually just here. Now to me that looks part of the old yes. bell inn. What are these buildings? Yes, these cottages along, um, along this road here, which is the road to Bulldog, mm. they were cottages usually inhabited by the ostlers. Back in the property, I'm struggling with a connection in one of the bedrooms. I felt your presence downstairs before entering to the kitchen. You kind of tried to push your energy out, but then now you've retreated. Where are you? I need to know who you are and why you're here and what's going on in this place. Are you scaring people? Come on, connect with me. I need to know. It's weird, I'm standing here as if this is what you do. You will stand here and you will look at people and watch them when they're sleeping. As I listen to Kelvin explain more about what he's witnessed, there's no doubt in my mind we're dealing with serious activity. The strangest uh, experience I had was when I was in bed, the floorboards were moving. I said, who is that? And as I said it, the bed moved down my body paralyzed and it said in my head Brandon but I didn't know whether I was asleep I was awake I was wide awake but at the time I was like you know questioning myself did this really happen today and that was my first reaction would be to move but I couldn't something sad yeah it's like yeah it's like it's like he climbed into my body just to tell me who it was and then left as soon as it happened I think there's enough evidence to establish a link between the old bell and the cottages. But could there be a deeper paranormal connection? The old bell is significant because I've heard a few stories about this place. Do you know anything at all about uh, paranormal activity or unusual happenings? Because I've read a fair bit. People have heard sounds, people have heard crying, people have heard footsteps. I discovered there was a seance here in the 1940s. 
They came up with the name Hannah Bedwell. Does that mean anything? Could she somehow link her cottage to this inn? There was a serving maid who worked in the bell. Her father actually was one of the chief ostlers at the time, and she had a child out of wedlock. And once that would have been discovered in those days, she would it was instant dismissal. She would have been out on the streets. So she smothered the child in the night. And apparently the sounds that are heard are of her calling the child and the child crying. Oh, how sad. But as a chief ostler there, yeah, he distant. may well have lived in one of the cottages. Yes, he may well have done. Looking around, I'm sensing conflicting emotions, something darker more disturbing your energy is different from that room to this room which means you're thinking differently why i'm suddenly hit by overwhelming emotions you lost a child i feel your pain you lost a daughter i understand I'm feeling your emotion. Your emotion is flowing through me, okay? Allow me to understand more. Maybe I can help you. Please. That's why you come in this room. You miss your daughter. In Buntingford, Hertfordshire, our team of paranormal experts have been called in to help the residents of an old converted stable. The other night we had the door open in the bedroom and then there was very faint light footsteps creaking in between the beds. Plagued by disturbing paranormal activity since moving in, they're looking for answers. How many spirits do you think there are residing in that property? I'd say at least four. At least four? At least four. Because when I say the child, like the children in my bedroom, I think there's more than one of them. How come? Because of the shadow, like seeing the shadows around. Why are they different in the kind of shape? Um, no, you just see them together. And apparently um, there's animal ones as well. <laughs> okay, all type of animals. I, I, I would say a dog. The overwhelming emotions I sensed earlier have now passed. I know I'm dealing with multiple spirits, but I'm also sensing something else. Is there a dog spirit in this house? If there is, please bark or growl so I know you're here. Make a sound. We just heard someone walking upstairs, and there's nobody upstairs. The entire crew is down there. Do a quick sweep and show everybody that's here right now. We've got the director, we've got the sound guy, and we got Ryan. All here right now. There's nobody else up there. We've got. Yep. Our director's freaking out because he's never heard of EVPs before. And it's, you know, this is real time. We're recording this in real time. So I'm happy with the information that I've gotten here, what I've picked up on. I've got a bunch of things I need to lay it out on a piece of paper and take a look at it. And then I need to discuss it with Jane and with Barry on what they have found out from the interviews and the history related to this place. With a better understanding of the cottage's history and some of the spirits they could be facing, the team regroup. The next step is meeting the concerned residents. Hi, Hi. Hi. Kelvin. Hi. Nice to see you again. Hi, Henry. Henry, lovely to nice meet you. Well, I think there's so much going on. I think we waste no more time. Should we go in and maybe start in the living room all together? As Henry and Sarah have experience capturing paranormal evidence, I want to start by seeing if we can replicate those conditions together. When you guys got responses on your recorder, were there specific things that you guys used to do? Sometimes we used to build up the energy. It was 
that white noise. Okay, how'd you do that? And we'll use the stereogram over there. In here? Yeah. Well, why don't we try turning this on? Yep, sure. Something like shortwave would probably be the best one to run it up on. Well, these old bike radios are really interesting because today, of course, we use digital recorders and, mm. and digital stereos and things, and they are prone to other interference. This is a problem, whereas something like this, this is taking things way back to when trying to capture voices, so ITC, instrumental transcommunication, mm. as it was called, when it first started. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's just turn this up a little bit and see if anything comes through. Spirits, can you connect with us through this device? Speak to us so we can hear you. Chris, can you hear that? Yeah, I can hear that. At the beginning, it was being like a demon. It's like a little girl's voice. Yeah, I heard that. I can definitely hear that. Did you just say Hannah? Did you say it? Someone said Hannah. Is Hannah Bedwell here? I'm sorry, my head's going to move funny. Can that sound is, is essentially... No, I, it, it could disrupt your, could um, disrupt your frequencies in your brain. When, when Jane says it had a bedwell here, yeah. I'll just play that back. There is a guess. Okay. But it, it sounds like it comes through there. Okay. Like I hear it in my ear. I understand. Is had a bedwell here? See? I can clearly hear a yes response to is had a bedwell here, but Chris can't hear it. I mean, um, Henry, you heard yes. it. Yes. And there was a, yeah, a very quick, quick yes. Aggressive, an aggressive quick yes. I mean, the way I could explain is I'm deaf in one ear. I'm deaf in one ear. Oh my god. Here. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Hang on a minute, Henry. I'm deaf in my left ear. Same. Yes. We both are experiencing this. We're both completely deaf in our left ear. So for anyone watching at home, yes, I have been deaf in my left ear since birth. What about you, Henry? Since about the age of three. So that frequency that is playing through there. It's kind, of, it's kind of messing with my brain, but I'm hearing words, so perhaps there are spirits speaking in this room. But they are trying to communicate with us using the frequency coming out of this, this radio. Having sensed a dog earlier, Sarah tells me her beloved dog Lulu recently died. So I try an experiment. Call your dog. Lulu. Lulu, come here. to work with and lots to think about but uh, we'll let you know how we get on. From what we've already learnt about the cottage I've got a good idea where to set up cameras. Now it's just a case of getting everything in place before we begin our investigation. As Kelvin, Sarah and Henry leave, Stable Cottage is locked down and the team gather in the nerve centre. Now this location operates over two floors. You have a ground floor level and a first floor. I've set up eight cameras in this property. It's quite small, so we've covered the main areas. We've got one there in the living room, which is on cam eight. You have the kitchen covered twice, and I'll come back to the reason why. The bathroom is covered, and you've also got the stairs and the bedroom areas as well. So pretty much every single area of this property is covered by cameras right now. Now, the key thing with this is, Kelvin mentioned about this repeating apparition that keeps moving through the kitchen area. Every single day at the same time, Monday to Friday, between 11.45 p.m. and 12.30 a.m. This is our best chance of catching a ghost on camera. So the camera you see, uh, this one here, which is the kitchen, all right? And then this one, which is the little downstairs toilet looking into the kitchen, this is the path that the apparition apparently takes. If it's there, we can't miss it. I mean, time check now, about 10 to 11. We've got 11.30 onwards, we need to be ready in a position. You ready to do this? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's go. Just I can't start looking at For the next 12 hours, it's just us and whatever lurks in Stable Cottage. <laughs> In Buntingford, Hertfordshire, our team of paranormal experts have set up their cameras 
and are about to begin their all-night investigation. They've been called in to help the residents of Grade 2 listed Stable Cottage deal with a series of increasingly disturbing and unexplainable events. Well, Chris, as you suggested, we'll split up. Yeah. Okay. But we only have well, about 40 minutes before we need to be in place to try and catch that residual energy that moves around the kitchen. Okay. So where do you want to go? Uh, I guess maybe I'll go up on the stairs. Sounds good. I'll be here. I can't like this room. I think I'll stay in here. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to base myself in the kitchen. I know from speaking to Kelvin that there's an entity regularly seen walking past the kitchen window. But it's time sensitive, so I need to get in position. But as I'm setting up my equipment, things start happening. What was that? Guys, a magnet just got thrown off the fridge. I thought you dropped the battery or something. No, 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 come here, look. It's on the floor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It literally came off the fridge and it's over here. You sure, Adrian? Did you bump it? Yep. A magnet just went flying off the refrigerator. Oh my god. What? Stop, don't move. You got some None of you move. move. There's something stood by the fridge waving his arms around. What's happening? Can you say something into this recorder? Let us know you're here to prove you're here. Barry's got you on camera. Can you speak to me? Who are you? Back. Stood right in front of the fridge waving. <laughs> It's an unusual spark to our investigation, but we're making contact. Moments later, I start picking up on something too. Guys, I'm going to go upstairs. I feel like I need to go up there for some reason. We know Kelvin's room has been a focus for some of the strongest sightings and darker experiences. Now, I sense I'm being drawn in. Well, Kelvin, who's your room is, he's seen a figure at the end of the bed. Oh, yeah. That's what I picked up during my walkthrough. And apparently it was so intense that he was paralysed in bed. And he saw an impression on the bed. And then someone sat. Can I reenact it? Why don't you do that and I'll go in the other room? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Are there any spirits in this room? You can come to me, show yourself to me. With Chris and Jane upstairs, I'm hoping I'm in time to catch Kelvin's regular kitchen ghost. It's this ghost that's doing the same thing, replaying the same thing over and over again, but seemingly only Monday to Friday, between half eleven and half past twelve. Let's press record on here. A small full spectrum camera. And hit record. And it's that running. With its heightened sensitivity, this camera captures some ultraviolet and most of the near infrared spectrum. I think we just have to wait and see. That's all we can do. Back upstairs, I begin my investigation by focusing in on the spirits of the children I picked up earlier. And I don't have to wait long. Jane, come in here. Listen to this, there right here. I'm gonna sit here for Listen to this. Yes, sir. There are two girls. Two girl spirits. Okay. Then what do they want to tell us? The two girl spirits that are here. What do you want to tell us? Two girls. Uh, we're close to time we need to be downstairs to see if this apparition shows itself. 
going downstairs, we're on time, but is the ghost. Allow us to see you manifest in this kitchen. Come on. What do we got? Is it over the time? This is your last chance. Is that it? Have we missed our window of opportunity? So take a night off. It's a big setback. I was really hopeful we'd get something with Kelvin's ghost. But with plenty of other leads to follow up, Chris and I decide to investigate the story I'd uncovered earlier. The tragic tale of Hannah Bedwell, who killed her child born out of wedlock. What is your name? We know Hannah. Your first name. desensitization experiment where I'll make myself vulnerable by blocking out my senses of sight and sound. All I can feel is touch. A spirit box will sweep radio frequencies, generating white noise, giving any spirits trying to communicate the energy to come through static. Can you hear anything I'm saying? No? Okay, I'm going to start this experiment. Hannah Bedwell, if you can hear my voice and you're still looking for your child and you want to be reunited with your father, please say something to the spirit box. If you know as an insect from the hand, you seem to straight from the hand, you know. Can you touch Jane's leg? Place your hand on her leg. The spirit box is going a bit crazy. And then silence. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Something going on there. Jane? You can't hear me, can you? Oh, oh my god! It was that! It was that! Oh, my back! That's what I just felt. Like that. Jane, take the headphones off. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now, yeah? Yeah. All right, I'm just stopping this experiment quickly because... Okay. Oh, it's got on my back. That's horrible. You were reacting almost immediately after I asked specific questions to physically interact with you, right? Did you ask about the hands? Yes, and you immediately you start rubbing your hands and then touch your leg. Oh, no. But listen, look at the spirit box. It's just turned itself off, off sweep. Taking a breather, we reflect on what we've just experienced. So then that almost confirms the theory that maybe if we make ourselves more vulnerable yeah. that they will feel more comfortable in coming forward to us. Wow. But before we've really had time to process everything, we get an urgent call from Chris. Mary! Jane! I have something incredible. What? You're gonna be surprised when you hear this. Come on. It's the two girls. It's the two girls talking to us. You got two girls? Yep. Well, on EVP? Yes, incredible. While Barry and Jane were doing their experiment, I analyzed audio from my earlier recordings. What I found in the electronic voice phenomena 
is unbelievable. I want you to hear this first, okay? You ask, do you want to see your father? Do you want to see your, let me see your child? Find us our father. Find us our father. Father. Find us our father. Okay. Listen to the question. Two girl spirits that are here. What do you want to tell us? What do you want to tell us? Mm -hmm. And this was in the bedroom with the twins. You're sitting next to me. We've got a father looking for his children, his daughter, and then we have two girls looking for their father. Are they one and the same? In Buntingford, Hertfordshire, we're eight hours into investigating the paranormal activity that's been disturbing the residents of Stable Cottage. Throughout the night, you've had positive responses from the spirits. And then at 2.47 a.m., my structured light sensor camera picks up on something. Combining an infrared projector with a monochrome sensor, it visually detects spirits and displays them as stick figures. But this apparition seems to have a purpose. There was just a figure, literally as I pressed record, of a something stood right there telling us to go upstairs. Oh! He's at the top of the stairs now. He'd like us to go up into the bedroom. The spirit responds. Yes, yes, it just did. That's oh, the point. Come on. Okay, go. St. Kelvin's room he wants us to go in. This strong presence seems intent on drawing us into an area where some of the most disturbing activity has been recorded. I'm having a really hard time in this house. Very, very weak. It happened earlier. As soon as I left the place, I was fine. That's where he connects with the daughters is in the other room. Yeah, this is the room. I can feel it. This is where I got the EVP, too. My God. I'm having a hard time getting around. But it's not just me suffering. Before long, the oppressive atmosphere hits Barry. Chris, I'm so good. Just let it pass through you. Realize it's not your pain, it's his. Our presence is triggering a powerful spirit response. I'm certain this nausea is being generated by the strong male presence I'd sensed earlier. And with Hannah's energy coming through too, it's become overwhelming. His loss and Hannah's reveal the pain and suffering in this house. Two separate families, torn apart, but united in grief. This whole case sends around Hannah. Does she yeah. send, she's, she's, she is the focus of this investigation. Do you think we have to bring Hannah, reconcile her with her child and her father? Help. 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 I, I think if we can get Hannah with us, everything else will be think? Us. By opening a circle and us joining hands and praying for her, she'll come forward and be able to find peace. Absolutely. With a plan in place, we begin cleansing the house. pushes out any distortion, any negative frequencies for energy. It vibrates. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pray for the dead. In particular, there's a couple souls that we are specifically praying for. For Hannah. Yes, for the two sisters. Us. Second. Okay. And of course, the Father, let go of your past and rise to your future. 
enter into the light, the spirit and the soul that was known as your child. Forgive yourself as it has forgiven you. You don't have to be alone anymore. Your father has come for you. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for allowing us to help you. Amen. It's been a successful investigation. Our prayers have helped the spirits cross over, and all that's left to do is for Chris to perform a final cleansing ceremony around the house. As we've been trapped here on this land, on this property, on this home, may it now be blessed. It's been an intense night. But as dawn breaks, we invite Henry, Sarah, and Kelvin back into their home to reveal our discoveries. Are you looking forward to hearing how we go yes. on? Yes. yes, rest this night, looking forward to it. I don't know where to start, but let me just tell you this. You were talking about the two girls, right? Mm -hmm. You're correct. I want you to hear this. Right here it says, find us our father. So these two girls were looking for their father. Now it's ironic because during my walkthrough, I had a male spirit coming to me that was upset. He was trying to find his daughter. He lost a child. I feel your pain. Find us our father. That's good for me, goosebumps. <laughs> Tell me about it. We decided that because there's potentially children here, the two girls, that we would try to entice them forward. So I had blindfold, earplugs, so I couldn't see, I couldn't hear. So I'm completely relying on the sense of touch. And the idea was that Barry would ask the spirits to affect me, so to touch me or to sit next to me. And, and apparently, we had some really good responses. When I was sitting there, I felt touches on my hand. I felt something brush past my leg. I felt as if someone came to sit next to me and I actually thought it was Barry. And I reached out at one point and there was no one there. I then felt something on my back. Oh my God, it was that, it was that. On my back. Now, during the investigation, our cameraman was facing me uh, has back towards the fridge yeah. and one of your magnets threw itself off. It didn't fall, it landed three feet away. What was that? So as we picked this up, I was thinking absolutely stunned at this kind of poltergeist-like activity. Moments later, I called this on the camera, on the SLS camera. And this blows me away. We stood here in the living room. I'm going to cue this up for you. And a figure appeared just here Spirit, at the door. Watch what it does. It leads us upstairs. Are you still there? Are you show yourself. And now the same figure reappears on the landing. Yeah, that's so Let's come back. You see it? What can sometimes happen, especially in a house of this age, is that you'll get multiple layers of history. I did know from the records and the research that there was a high possibility that a young girl called Hannah Bedwell may have lived in this house. Now, Hannah Bedwell had a tragic story. She had a baby at 15 who she smothered. But as we were here, it became apparent to all of us, and we couldn't ignore it, that there was a Hannah reaching out to us. Well, the first ones we get, it says, it's Hannah. After hearing that, I'm like, okay, well, let's test this a little bit further. Let's make sure. So I was saying bed well, right? But where to go with that, what to do? You needed the help, they needed the help. From this moment, I was using a digital recorder, this was towards the end of the investigation, and I asked a very specific question, and we seemed to get a very clear answer. Now, see what you think this says. Why is he here? Tell God 
Help me. Yep, it's four. What we like to do is when we get all the pieces from our investigation is we put it together and we come up with an idea of what's actually going on. We had multiple spirits here, like Jane had said. We had the two sisters that were trying to find their father. We had the father that I came in contact with immediately during my walkthrough that was looking for, ironically, his daughter. Then we had Hannah that she had dealt with a lot, obviously, the loss of her child as well as being condemned and put to death. So what we did is the three of us got together and we did what's called prayers for the dead. Prayers for the dead is significant because what it does is it calls upon loved ones on the other side to hear our prayer, to come forward, to assist in this transition. So you'd be happy to know that the daughters were reacquainted with their father and together they crossed over in peace and they said peace quite a lot. And then Hannah also went over it does actually feel different when we came home. It just felt cold and lonely. Empty. So I think empty. It's yeah. the first time I think it sort of felt like it's empty. So we want to thank you for having us here because it's something that we'd love to do is not only just help you guys bring resolution to this home, give you answers, but we have to help these souls and these spirits too. Yes. Yes. That's the most important thing. Right. And there's one thing you'll be happy about is I asked the dog if the dog wanted to go or not, but the dog decided to stay for a time period. And then when it's ready, it'll cross. Okay. That's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a successful investigation for everyone at Stable Cottage. Well, that was an emotional case, guys. Absolutely. I'm so glad that we managed to help reunite Hannah with her father and help her to cross over. It was amazing. But who knows what the next case will bring.